As we have discussed, having a clear intention in dance and physical theater work is extremely important. We are now going to talk a little bit more in depth about where we can direct this focus and how to connect with ourselves as performers and our surroundings. I often like to think about working outside in versus inside out, putting my focus on external objects or people in the space to enhance my emotional journey inside, or really listening to myself and letting my inside journey shine outwards. Kevin McCurdy speaks about when you're performing, you have to feel it first, mentally and emotionally. Then the physicality will come through when you do this. You have to give some of yourself to the story. The commitment to the movement must be there. Here's Kev McCurdy speaking about working outside in versus inside out and the importance of truly feeling the emotion that you are trying to portray. But seeing how the body then moves with the breath and moves with an emotion, if you're not connected with an emotion, it means nothing. You know, you're then vocally trying to do an emotion, but if you're not feeling it, then it literally, as an audience member, I'm sitting there going, man, this is cold. This is nothing, I'm not feeling nothing at all. I can't relate to you. So from that, I was like, well, how can I make an audience relate to the movement that's going on on stage? And then that's when I really got into it. So my style is very, very different compared to a lot of other people out there because I really, I really look at how everything is connected. You've got to give some of yourself into the story. If you don't, if you don't commit to that, it means nothing. It becomes very technical. And, you know, I don't want to go to the theater and watch a technical show. You know, I want to see a show. I want to see actors connect. And you can always tell when they're connected and when they're not. How do we practice connecting with emotion we are trying to portray. There are so many ways to do this, but today we'll be exploring how improvisation can help with this. Improvisation can be intimidating at first, but with practice, you will begin to relax into the idea of moving on impulse, and this level of comfort in improvisation will help you connect with your most honest self, allowing for more connection in all of your other work. For more information and exercises on improvisation, make sure to check out our YouTube playlist on improvisation. For today, here is Alvin Kalantis speaking about improvisation and some important things to remember on your improv journey. Alvin is a photographer, teacher, dancer, choreographer, expert in improv. He is a certified Gaga teacher and briefly explains some key points about this movement language. You can find more information about Gaga in the description of this video. Started to train in a movement language from Israel called Gaga. And Gaga is basically um, a free-form, sensation-based uh, movement class that allows you to tap into the many sensations your body can make, the stories of your flesh, bones, and skin. So it's a lot about finding meaning behind um, everything you do inside free-form, you know, through images, through the physical actions of moving different body parts, and how it can produce many sensations, the pleasure, the passion, you know, things inside of you that sometimes a structured class cannot provide. And so I was certified to teach this in 2018. And I am the first teacher in Toronto to be certified. And I've been teaching it in Berlin and traveling around the world to teach this language. Um, so it, it made quite a big impact to my improvisation as it gave me a body of vocabulary to work around free for movement and how to articulate it. You know, improvisation is a lot about admitting yourself in the moment, how you can let go of expectations, judgment, fear, all these negativity that you put upon yourself. For me, I bring that to improvisation and I purge it out. I let it leave me, you know, and as I move and as I find more freedom inside what I do, I allow myself to let go of these things that gives me this moment of relaxation, that gives me the space to be in the moment, that gives me the space to enjoy whatever I'm doing in that moment. So it's, it's kind of like painting, you know? You want to come with a clear canvas with lots of colors and lots of brushes and just go for it. Let it come out however, however you feel. 
allow it to manifest with with the judgment the fear and everything like let it t let it come out of you this is how the expert uh, the expression can come alive you know but if you come in with expectation thinking that you need to paint a beautiful landscape and a beautiful tree in the river you know sometimes it doesn't work out the way you want it because you get caught up in this expectation you know and that you don't become in the you don't become in the present moment you don't live in the present moment because you are so consumed by the expectation of what you're supposed to do and for me improvisation it's a lot about the work it's a lot about the letting go it's a lot about the, the searching for freedom inside the movement you're making to not judge it if you fall you fall if you smile you smile if you laugh you laugh but whatever comes out of you is completely how it should come out you could see that finding meaning behind what you're doing extremely present through dance theater fight choreography improvisation and so much more pretty cool take a look at these videos from creature by frog in hand and take notice of the intention commitment and the connection these performers have with themselves and each other was that? For this episode's exercise, we would like you to find a quiet space to listen to what we call an audio dance. This is a guided improvisation led by Clark Blair, where we ask you to connect on impulse with your emotional state. Try to be as honestly expressive as you can be. Allow yourself to be silly and to have fun. Time has truly lost all meaning these days. So I invite you to take this as a grounding practice to disrupt the typical passage of time and to restart your day whenever you feel. So, welcome to your shower. Take a look around this small, familiar space and look closely. How familiar are you actually with your shower? Do you ever really look at this space? Notice the light and how maybe it's different than when you usually occupy this space. Maybe you see a new speck of something that you missed the last time you were cleaning. Maybe you don't look too closely at that. And plant your feet and close your eyes. Check in with how your body feels and how maybe that's different than when you usually occupy this space as well. Maybe you've usually just woken up and your body is stiff, or if you typically shower in the evenings, your body is tired after a long day, or sweaty from being out in the sun. And check in with how your body feels right now in this moment. Do a scan and take notice of any places that are maybe holding tension or soreness. Check in with where your breath is sitting in your body. You can name these sensations without any judgment. There is no right or wrong way to exist in your body. And begin to rub the palms of your hands together. Create some friction, create some heat. And bring this to the skin of your forearms, working your way up your arm to your torso, a nice dry shower, waking up the skin, bringing blood to the surface. Work your way around your shoulders, your neck, your chest, your armpits, around your rib cage and stomach and back, down your glutes and hips, the surfaces of your thighs and knees and lower leg, 
the tops and bottoms of your feet, being careful if your shower is still wet. Vigorously wash every inch of your skin. Wake up your body, wake up your flesh. And then turn this into a drum. Forceful but gentle into the meat of your flesh. All over your body like one of those fancy high pressure rain showers. Take care around your bony bits, but don't neglect them. Your rib cage, your sternum. You can come up to your head and drum with little fairy fingers all over your scalp, your forehead, your cheekbones, waking up the skin of your face. And feel free to stretch the skin of your face while you do this. Open your jaw, stick out your tongue, and then bring it back down into your body and increase the speed and intensity of your drum. Feel the pleasure in this moment of effort, drumming all over your body for three, two, one, and let that go. And just stand with yourself. Breathe. Feel the tingling and aliveness in your skin. Feel the palms of your hands prickle with the rush of blood. Feel the heat radiating off your body. What is the temperature of the air between your fingers? Notice how that little bit of effort has affected your breathing. Take another scan of your body. What feels different now than when you started? And I invite you to take three breaths, swiping your hands from the top of your head all down the front of your body and flicking off all of the negative emotion or stress or tension that's been blocking your system. Send it all right down the drain. Take out the garbage and make space for this new day. Ready, first breath. Second. Third. And just stand with your eyes closed. You can smile a bit. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle your fingers. Try to wiggle your ears. Feel all of this space that you've just opened up inside your body. This cleansing that you've done in your little shower space. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Check back in with the small, familiar space that is your shower. Good morning. When you're ready, I invite you to step out of your shower and to begin your day anew. That wraps up our episode on externalizing an emotional journey. Feel free to leave your comments below and share your work or experience with Frog in Hand. Next up on our playlist is Clear Intention, Clear Story. See you soon.